Every day, billions of dollars in goods move between Canada and the United States. But until now, that flow has depended on outdated infrastructure and a single, privately owned bridge built nearly a century ago. That's about to change. Rising over the Detroit River, a bold new bridge is nearing completion. One that aims to transform how the world's two largest trading partners stay connected, linking Ontario and Michigan. This project is more than just a crossing. It's a response to years of congestion, legal deadlock, and cross-border delays. What makes it even more remarkable is that one country, Canada, chose to finance the entire project, including the portion on U.S. soil, to ensure it finally got built. Why would Canada foot the entire bill for a project that lands on American soil? And why is this bridge already being called one of North America's most ambitious infrastructure undertakings? Today, let's delve into the $4.7 billion Gordie Howe International Bridge, which will be opening soon. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. For years, the Detroit-Windsor Corridor has served as a crucial lifeline for trade between the United States and Canada. The Ambassador Bridge, completed in 1929, has long carried the majority of commercial vehicles crossing between Canada and the United States, accounting for approximately 25% of all truck trade between the two countries. However, the bridge's aging infrastructure, coupled with its location on city streets and its private ownership, pose significant limitations. Increasing congestion, limited capacity, safety concerns, and rising geopolitical concerns regarding infrastructure control led policymakers to consider alternatives. By the early 2000s, feasibility studies under the Detroit River International Crossing Initiative began identifying the need for a second, publicly owned bridge that could ease logistical bottlenecks and ensure a more efficient flow of goods and people. Canada, in particular, pushed for a direct freeway-to-freeway -freeway connection between Highway 401 and Interstate 75. Despite fierce resistance from the Ambassador Bridge's owners, the vision for a larger, more modern crossing began to take shape, ultimately evolving into one of North America's most ambitious infrastructure projects. Emerging from that vision is the Gordie Howe International Bridge an engineering marvel that's setting new benchmarks for scale, efficiency, and cross-border integration. Once completed, the bridge will span approximately 1.5 miles across the Detroit River, anchored by a 2,800-foot main span, the longest cable-stayed span on the continent. It will carry six lanes of traffic, three in each direction, and include a toll-free multi-use path for pedestrians and cyclists offering rare cross-border access to active commuters and trail users. This path will connect directly to larger trail systems, such as Canada's Trans-Canada Trail and Michigan's Iron Bell Trail. The bridge's most striking architectural element is its pair of A-shaped towers, each rising 720 feet high. Designed with a subtle curve to resemble the arc of a hockey stick, the towers pay tribute to Gordie Howe, the Canadian ice hockey legend for whom the bridge is named. From these towers, 216 high-tension cables stretch outward to support the deck, which hovers 150 feet above the Detroit River, ensuring clearance for marine traffic while creating a visually iconic silhouette. The project extends far beyond the main span. On the U.S. side, a 167-acre port of entry is being constructed in Detroit's Delray neighborhood featuring state-of-the-art customs inspection facilities and new highway ramps that connect directly to Interstate 75. On the Canadian side, a 130-acre port of entry will link seamlessly to the Right Honorable Herb Gray Parkway and Highway 401, enabling uninterrupted freeway-to-freeway -freeway traffic flow across the border. Cultural and artistic integration has also been central to the bridge's identity lighting installations by Canadian artist Douglas Coupland, and commemorative pieces honoring the Underground Railroad reflect the deep historical and cultural resonance of the region. Environmental features, such as wildlife fencing, noise mitigation walls, and landscaped buffer zones, further demonstrate a thoughtful approach to sustainability and community impact. Altogether, 
The project is expected to cost $4.7 billion, covering design, construction, and long-term operations over a 30-year period. Construction of the Gordie Howe International Bridge began in July 2018, led by Bridging North America, a consortium comprising Dragados Canada, Floor Corporation, and Econ. Under a public-private partnership model, the group is responsible for design, construction, financing, and 30 years of operations and maintenance, ensuring long-term performance and risk-sharing. Initial phases involved land preparation, utility relocation, and foundation work. By early 2021, the massive foundation piers on both riverbanks were complete, paving the way for tower construction. The U.S. tower reached its full height in August 2023, followed by the Canadian tower in December 2023. Concurrently, crews used a balanced cantilever method to assemble the deck in segments. A major milestone came in June 2024 when the two sides of the deck connected, completing the full river span. Since then, work has focused on lighting, paving, signage, and finishing the port of entry buildings. As of mid-2025, construction is approximately 95% complete with final landscaping, lane markings, and safety testing underway for a September 2025 opening. The project overcame pandemic-related challenges, including supply chain disruptions and inflation, which delayed completion by a year and added $523 million to overall costs. Despite this, progress has remained largely on track. The Gordie Howe International Bridge is being fully financed by the Government of Canada, including the U.S. Port of Entry, an unusual cross-border arrangement. Under a bilateral agreement, Canada will recover its investment through tolls collected from vehicles entering Canada, while the U.S. side will remain toll-free. This structure allowed the project to proceed without direct funding from U.S. federal or state governments, though U.S. Customs and Border Protection has committed to operational support. The $4.7 billion project is being delivered through a public-private partnership between the Windsor-Detroit Bridge Authority and the Bridging North America Consortium, covering construction and 30 years of maintenance. While the bridge will be publicly owned by Canada, the public-private partnership model ensures long-term performance and cost efficiency. Beyond core infrastructure, Canada has also committed community benefit funds to support local neighborhoods in both Windsor and Detroit. Funding job training programs, green space enhancements, and home improvement grants for residents affected by construction. The Gordie Howe International Bridge has faced significant legal, financial, and political hurdles since its inception. Chief among its opponents was Manuel Maroon, owner of the privately held Ambassador Bridge who filed multiple lawsuits, lobbied lawmakers, and ran public campaigns, arguing that a new public bridge would unfairly compete with his privately owned bridge. After years of litigation, the courts dismissed his claims and construction proceeded. Financial concerns also drew criticism, particularly after the project's budget rose from an initial $4.2 to $4.7 billion, largely due to inflation and COVID-19-related disruptions. While not uncommon in megaprojects, the cost increase attracted scrutiny from political critics and fiscal watchdogs. During early planning, environmental and social justice concerns emerged, especially from residents in Detroit's Del Rey neighborhood, where the U.S. port of entry is located. Issues of displacement, noise, and pollution were raised, prompting the introduction of mitigation measures to address community impact. Despite these challenges, the project has maintained strong public and governmental support. The Gordie Howe International Bridge will deliver major economic, social, and environmental benefits. As a key trade corridor, its direct freeway-to-freeway -freeway link between Highway 401 and Interstate 75 will ease congestion, reduce border wait times, and improve efficiency for cross-border freight and passenger travel. This will also help divert traffic from the aging Ambassador Bridge and Detroit Windsor Tunnel, easing inner city congestion and lowering emissions. Beyond trade, the toll free multi use path introduces a rare opportunity for cross border walking and cycling, encouraging sustainable tourism and recreation. 
The bridge also features cultural elements that celebrate indigenous heritage and the region's diverse history. The community benefit programs associated with the bridge support local residents with funding for home improvements, job training, and environmental initiatives. Apprenticeship programs tied to construction have created thousands of jobs and equipped local workers with valuable skills. In many ways, the bridge is more than infrastructure. It is an engine for social and economic development. With construction nearing completion and a September 2025 opening on the horizon, the Gordie Howe International Bridge is poised to become a lasting force in cross-border infrastructure. Once operational, it will offer a vital alternative for freight and passenger traffic, boosting network resilience and reducing dependence on aging crossings. Under long-term public ownership, revenue will be reinvested into maintenance and community development, ensuring accountability and long-term value. The bridge is expected to catalyze growth in logistics, manufacturing, and tourism across the Windsor-Detroit region. Its seamless connectivity and modern design could attract investment, drive regional development, and strengthen cross-border collaboration. Its sustainable features also position it as a forward-looking model for green infrastructure. More than a bridge, it represents a bold rethinking of how nations build for the future, together. Could this be one of the best examples of what cross-border cooperation can achieve? Leave your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.